Alright, Buenos Dias, mis amigos. Alright, so today I'm going to play a portion of uh, this video by Calvary Boise with Tom Velasco. And uh, I think it was recorded two days ago. So let's listen to his own words. But uh, I will be back after next week. Um, with that in mind, uh, Revelation chapter 20. I hope you guys either were with us last week or if you weren't had a chance to, to watch the online study because we went through the, the millennium, what the millennium is, what it means. And, and in particular, we talked about the three different ways of viewing the millennium. Uh, we've done that actually for the last two weeks. So just brief. Ref All right. So here's uh, an issue I have. Because I, you know, I see this quite often where these guys, they'll stand in front of God and everybody. And they'll say, this is the three different views of, you know, the, of what they'll call the millennial reign. Okay. Um, three different, they'll say three different views of the reign of Jesus Christ for a thousand years or whatever. However they word it, they always word it wrong, and then they present three different views, and they do not absolutely refute the two views that they believe are incorrect. Alright, so it's okay to present a false view, but you gotta crush it. And if you don't crush it, there's something wrong. I mean... There's something wrong, so much so that you're intentionally deceiving people. And you're playing two different people and trying to make everybody happy. And that's, that's a big problem, man. That's a big problem. It's like to hell with what the truth is. Let's try to make everybody happy. And well, how do you grow a church? That's how you do it. But it's not focused on the truth that's a problem refresher don't forget of course the one that you're probably most familiar with is the pre-millennial view the view that jesus following the seven-year tribulation period is going to return to the earth and he will literally physically establish a thousand year reign here on the earth all right so okay now you gotta if you don't believe that you gotta absolutely refute it and crush it and and so the idea is nonsensical, but how do you get that across to somebody that believes it? I don't think you can, man, because they're not going to trust what the Bible says. They're going to trust what their favorite pastor says. And if that's what John Hagee says, well, that's what it is. Right? Or if that's what Nicholas Cage says, that's what it is. Kirk Cameron or one of those guys, you know, that's what it is. That to hell with the Bible, right? Well, the Bible says that no man knoweth the hour, no man, but of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. All right, so nobody knows when the Lord comes in the clouds of heaven. Nobody knows. So you, this I. So this idea that there's going to be a seven-year period leading up to the end of the world is not supported by Scripture at all, and it contradicts the uh, the idea contradicts what we read many times that of that day and hour knows no man. There's no way. There's no way to. Uh, support that idea at all? Oh, what? You, what do you think is going to happen, man? You think you're going to turn the TV on and Dan Rather's going to get get on, a, you know, on behind a desk and say, "All right, ladies and gentlemen, the seven-year tribulation has begun." Yeah, come on, man. That's not that's not ever going to happen. Um. During that particular time, he will rule literally, physically, as the king. Jeez. Oh, All right, and so I gotta. 
I got to quash, squash, quash, squash that idea. I, I mean, it's amazing. It really is. It, these guys, they're preaching in the name. They're prophesying in the name of Jesus. They probably cast out devils in the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, they probably do many wonderful works. But they don't teach what the Bible says. It's, um, it's unbelievable. Right here, it is clear as all can be. It is not Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years. Read it. You, what, you don't believe what it says? Well, it says they lived and reigned with Christ. And they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. There's no mention at all of Jesus reigning a thousand years. None at all. In fact, oops. In fact, we got, I mean, there's plenty of scripture to point to. The one, you know, one's enough, isn't it? And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. What are you guys doing here? Really? What are you guys doing? You never read the Bible? Or just you're just saying to hell with what the Bible says. Let's make up our own doctrines. The king of the earth. And we, his saints, who had been caught up to be with him prior to the tribulation, who had been transformed. Wait. I'm utterly lost. I gotta go back. All right. I thought the tribulation was before. I thought the seven year tribulation was before the return of Christ. Did I get all that wrong? I missed something. The online study, because we went through the, the millennium, what the millennium is, what it means, and, and in particular, we talked about the three different ways of viewing the millennium. Uh, we've done that actually for the last two weeks, so just brief refresher. Don't forget, of course, the one that you're probably most familiar with is the pre-millennial view, the view that Jesus, following the seven-year tribulation period, is going to return to the earth, and he will literally physically establish a thousand year reign here on the earth um, and during that particular time he will rule literally physically as the king of the earth and we his saints who had been caught up to be with him prior to the tribulation wow alright so what the hell So you got, you got, what, just, people are just going to just, whoop, ascend, rapture, and then seven years of tribulation. And so people are going to disappear. Oh, that's right. That That's exactly what happens in that movie. That's right. That's right. So they're now they're teaching Hollywood movies as though it was... From the Bible. So. So I, I sort of jumped the gun there, didn't I? So they're saying. <clears throat> they are saying. That. We're just going to. Disappear. And then there's going to be a seven-year tribulation where, <clears throat> now this is going to get real stupid, all right, because I know what he's going to say next, but let, before we get there, I mean, if this ain't stupid enough. So, in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, all throughout the Bible, it talks about Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. And the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Then Jesus appears in the clouds of heaven, and he sends his angels to gather together his elect 
All right, and then we that is when we are changed in a moment of time, transformed into our glorified bodies. All right, and first it's going to be the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be. So I cannot at all fathom how they can even, I mean, you, you're solely going off of a Hollywood movie. Right? You're not going off of what the Bible says at all. Who had been transformed would reign and rule on the earth. All right, so I want you to notice something here. When this happens, it happens at the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and when we are raised up when we are changed when the angels gather together the elect we are lifted up in the air and then will be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory it's important to understand that this is not brought to pass until we are transformed into our glorified body all right and you cannot have another transformation after this point because this is when death is swallowed up and victory there is no more death or no more uh, how do I say this no more transformation from corruptible to incorruptible after this point man there cannot be any more transformations all right so therefore there cannot be any more chances for the unsaved to be saved this is it when this happens it's the end of the world well I mean that's what they asked Jesus and that's what Jesus told them and that's what's going to happen when it is the end of the world the angels will gather us together we will be lifted up in the air first the dead in Christ and then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together this is an, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump with the trump of God <laughs> the voice of the archangel a shout from heaven we shall be changed right and with the great sound of a trumpet we are gathered together, we are changed, and then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. All right, so that's it. There are no more second chances. I mean, that's it. The earth with him. To clarify a couple of things, we would be ruling given this view if this view is correct we will be ruling if this view is correct it's not correct I, I don't know how a reasonable sane person you don't even have to be smart you could be dumber than a bag of doorknobs dumb as all can be and still see what the scripture says and easily understand it it seems to me like the only way to not understand what the Bible says is if you willingly reject it if you don't want to believe it it's the only way um, in physical bodies that will not be the bodies that we have right now they will have been fully transformed and there will never again 
be an opportunity for us to sin or stumble or fall away. We will be in that regard kind of like the angels of heaven, so to speak. Not exactly like them, but like them in that one regard. We will live eternally. We will not die. But on the premillennial view, and in particular the dispensationalist view, because there are actually different kinds of premillennial views, but on the dispensationalist view, you will have people who survived the millennium. This is very important for our study tonight. People, sorry, not who survived the millennium, people who survived the tribulation. All right, so you survived the tribulation, which at the seven year tribulation, which is not in the Bible at all. So now he's going into detail about something that is absolutely foreign to the Bible, that's not in the Bible whatsoever. He's going into detail about a movie that he saw on Netflix. Who had not been raptured up and caught to be with the Lord. And those people who survived the tribulation will not be in the glorified bodies that we have. And on the premillennial... Wait, what? ...millennial view, the devil will be bound for that thousand-year period and... Wait, 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 what? Come on, man. So... You got the rapture, and then you have a seven-year tribulation, and then you have a thousand-year period. Well, you kind of left out a, a pretty big thing there, and that's the, you know... How do, you, how do you go from seven year, at the end of seven years to the beginning of the thousand year period? I... And so they will not face lineal view. The devil will be bound for that thousand no, you, you just skipped right over it. Who survived the trip. Yeah, listen. He just says, oh, the people that will survive the seven year tribulation. And then he skips over what will happen. How did what marked the end of that and the beginning of the thousand years? He just skips right over it, ignores it. The tribulation will not be in the glorified bodies that we have. And he made a big deal saying that oh, they won't be in our glorified bodies, they'll still be in their, um, you know, uh, corruptible bodies or whatever. But you make no, no mention at all, no mention at all of what triggers the end in the beginning of the seven year tribulation and the beginning of the thousand years. Not been raptured up and caught to be with the Lord. And those people who survive the tribulation will not be in the glorified bodies that we have. And on the premillennial view, the devil will be bound for that thousand You just completely ignored. Well, what happens? All right, so you got seven years of tribulation. What happens? Why did it end? It just ends. Well, why does the thousand year period begin? Well, it just begins. I mean, really, you get, if you're going to teach this nonsense, you got to be specific about this. I mean, if you're going to try to prove the Bible wrong, you got to be specific with exact wording and an exact explanation for what happens at the end of the seven years and what begins at the beginning or what kicks off the thousand. I mean, come on. Thousand year period, and so they will not face the kinds of temptations that we do. However, they will have weak bodies. They will have bodies that, I mean, they're strong compared to what we have now, probably, but they will be subject to illness. Wait, what? He just threw in a little caveat. What do you say? Kinds of temptations that we do. However, they will have weak bodies. They wait, will not wait, 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 wait. view. The devil will be bound for that thousand year period, and so they will not face the kinds of temptations that we do. So now you got unsaved people in <laughs> wow so you got 
people in their glorified bodies living among people that are not in their glorified bodies who are not saved and who are committing all kinds of sin and they are dying and so the Bible just lies I mean how do you so death is not swallowed up in victory and Jesus Christ died in vain and when it says when Jesus himself says that he will come at the end of the world and this gathering together of the elect obviously clearly is when we're transformed into our glorified bodies but Jesus is lying we do however they will have weak bodies they will have bodies that I mean they're strong compared to what we have now probably but they will be probably, but they're strong compared to what we have now but probably what the hell are you talking about so they will not face the kinds of temptations that we... What are you... You're talking about unsaved people not facing temptations, yet having all kinds of dirty sex. That's what you're going to say. However, they will have weak bodies. They will have bodies that... I mean, they're strong compared to what we have now, probably. Yeah, they're weak, but they're strong. You know, probably. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But they will be subject to illness and death, and people will... And death. So, Paul lied. Who can't blame this on Jesus? Paul lied when he said death is swallowed up in victory. But I'm going to tell you that this guy is saying Jesus lied because the Bible is the Word of God and Jesus is the Word of God. So, death is swallowed. Let's do it this way. Oh, he swallowed up death and victory. And the Lord God shall wipe away all tears from their face I mean this is not Paul's make-believe world this is the reality of God Almighty and the Word of God he will swallow up death and victory this is what happens when we are changed into our glorified bodies death is swallowed up in victory you cannot have us in a world where people are dying and people are getting sick and people are unsaved and people are having all kinds of dirty sex. You can't. You can't. That's not reality, man. That's Hollywood stuff will die during that thousand year period and all of those kinds of things and there will be the potential for rebellion at the end of that thousand year reign according to Revelation 20 so some people say that the thousand years will be bliss it will be uh, maybe not bliss but uh, it will be like utopia nope there, it'll be one thousand years of peace is what some people say now that's that's wrong too 20 the devil is released to re tempt the nations and the temptations would be directed against those people who live during the thousand year reign and their offspring well I mean right there right there it is dirty sex these guys are having dirty sex for a thousand years so basically the unsaved people you know how they're living now you know you probably met somebody that's not saved well in their you know they're having dirty sex and they're having children well that's going to continue after uh, Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven after we're transformed into our glorified bodies that's just going to keep keep happening really there's not going to be any change at all except for those of us that are Mormons I mean uh, those of us that are saved will be transformed into our glorified bodies <laughs> I mean, really, isn't this what this is? 
This is what the Mormons teach. So why why are these guys? I, I'm seeing it more and more. I mean, it's incredible. Um, because I remember 20 years ago when I was talking to Mormons and they were teaching me this stuff. This was not at all a common view. And now it's like, what happened? Why is everybody now teaching this idea? I mean, what is going on? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. All I can tell you is that this stuff is, is ridiculous. The, those who started the thousand year reign and their offspring. And many during that time, according to the frame of... Hey, I mean, they're having offspring, you know, they're, they're not saved. They're in their corruptible body, and they're having offspring. Now that's what—that's his words. My words are they're having dirty sex. So the dirty sex thing. Don't worry, folks. You get to keep having dirty sex after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. After this world is ended, you can still have dirty sex. Don't worry, folks. I know you're all kind of worried about that because you know how important dirty sex is well in first John chapter 2 starting verse 15 it says love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the Father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth for ever. Real quickly, I got to point this out. So, um, I guess. Uh, one thing I'll point out real quickly when I try to find this, and, and I'm not sure that I, I will be able to find it real quickly, but the, the the epistles of John is the same as the book of John, and John is the one that wrote the book of Revelation. All right, so, it, but it's all from God, okay? So, just that's just a side note, okay? Now, this is the will of him that sent me that everyone which sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life. Alright, so the will of God is that we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Alright, and the world passes away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Now this is important. Do you see what I'm seeing? The world passes away and the dirty sex thereof Matthew 24 Jesus is asked what will be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and the end of the world is when Jesus appears in the clouds of heaven and the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken the world will pass away and the dirty sex thereof so there is no more dirty sex after we are transformed into our glorified bodies right when this happens man this is it this is it death is swallowed up in victory so you can't have this dirty sex scenario thing that this guy's teaching premillennial view will side with the devil and so in that sense there will be a new fall so to speak right so that's the premillennial well where's this at where's the old fall and the new fall in the bible view the amillennial view is the view that the millennium that is referenced in revelation 20 is not speaking of a literal period of uh, the like a, a situation in which Jesus literally physically reigns on the earth, it is not speaking of a period of perfection or a period in which people actually 
uh, are in any way kept from sinning or that kind of stuff. What the Amillennials believes is that that passage is referencing or referring to the church age, right? So it's referring to the period of time following... Right, I just got to point this out. Okay, so I, I don't really have a problem so much with the church age. Um, the, the problem I have is that this term comes from dispensationalist and uh, it's born out of ignorance because there has never been uh, different ways to get saved and this idea of dispensationalism is not supported by the Bible at all but on the just by itself I don't have a problem with it it's just what it's typically it's typically used by people that teach a dispensational view like the Mormons do <laughs> and so I don't like to use it at all all right so um, so I don't want to get into it but I don't really have a problem with it but it is sort of a, there's a little bit of a red flag there, so. following Jesus's first resurrection when the church is on the earth and so on the amillennial view we are currently in that period of time now remember amillennial means that there ah uh, is a prefix in greek it means yeah yeah remember in greek well why not point to chinese you know why why what's a greek word okay well the you're pointing to greek for a word that is not in the bible I think about that, man. This word's not even in the Bible. And you're pointing to the Greek. To give a, a definition of an English word? Why not just give a English definition for an English word? I don't speak Greek. So it don't do me no good at all for you to give me definitions in Greek. To me, it looks like you're just phony, making stuff up and lying straight up lying because I don't speak Greek and I bet you he don't speak Greek either it means no millennium so people kind of get a little confused because they'll say so the amillennialist believes we are in the millennium right now sort of but not really because sort they of, believe but not the really. passage that speaks of the thousand year reign of Christ is wait 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 what sort of but not really well, what is that sort of but not really you know, like yeah I don't know if you don't know, man, just say, I don't know. So the amillennialist believes we are in the millennium right now. Sort of, but not really. Because they believe the passage that speaks of the thousand year reign of Christ. Sort of, but not really. They believe the passage that speaks of the thousand year reign of Christ. The problem is, there is no passage that speaks of the thousand year reign of Christ. So... To go back, probably, or not really, or they, they believe, what's he saying again? It's because they'll say, so the amillennialist believes we are in the millennium right now. Sort of, but not really. Sort of, but not really. <laughs> so, I mean, this is false twice. Alright, so you are claiming that they... Because they believe the passage that speaks of the thousand year reign of Christ. They, they believe the passage that doesn't exist. Well, sort of, maybe. You, you get what I'm seeing here, right? They'll say, so the amillennialist believes we are in the millennium right now. Sort of, but not really. Sort of, but not really. And then he makes a false claim. Because they believe the passage that speaks of the thousand year reign of Christ. Yeah, this is not of God. This, so, this sort of confusion here is not of God. There is no Bible verse in Revelation 20, anywhere at all in the Bible, that says there's a thousand year reign of Christ. I'm looking right at Revelation 
20 verses 4 and 6. And it does not say, I mean, I wonder, have these guys even looked to see what the Bible says? I mean, is this not incredible? Is talking about the church age, which is now. So in that sense, they would say, yes, we are currently living in the period of time that is referenced at the beginning. I, am I losing? I'm, I'm trying to drink this coffee as I'm listening, but I don't feel like I got enough coffee. Because they believe the passage that speaks of the thousand year reign. I'll sort of use because they'll say... So the amillennialist believes we are in the millennium right now. Sort of, but not really. Now, remember that. All right, let's, you know, sip on our coffee and just remember what he says. Be patient for just a few seconds. And then let's listen to what he says again about this. Okay. So the amillennialist believes we are in the millennium right now. Sort of, but not really. Because... They believe the passage that speaks of the thousand year reign of Christ is talking about the church age, which is now. So in that sense, they would say, yes, we are currently living in the period of time that is referenced at the beginning of Revelation chapter 20. However, well, you sort of. I mean, you went from yes to well, sort of. Thought to be with. Oops. And those people who survive the tribulation oh, will no. not be in the glorified bodies. Remember, all millennial means that their awe is a prefix in Greek. It means no millennium. So people reflecting back on the pre-mill view, the pre-millennialist, they believe the passage that speaks of the thousand-year reign I, of Christ okay. is cool. I talking about the church age, which are, people kind of get a little confused because they'll say, so the amillennialist believes we are in the millennium right now. Sort of, but not really. Because sort of, but not really. Because we are really. beginning of Revelation chapter 2. period of time that is referenced at the beginning of... In the period of time. So in that sense, they would say, yes, we are currently living. He goes from, yeah, sort of, yeah, maybe, to, yes, they believe. In the I mean, in a matter of seconds, man. So why did he say all that stuff? Uh, you, you could say he's trying to deliberately confuse the, the students that he's talking to, but it's probably because he himself is utterly confused about the whole thing. The period of time that is referenced at the beginning of Revelation chapter 20. However, they would say it's not a millennium in the sense you think of. It is not a thousand year period, as is evidenced by the fact that we're now a solid 2,000 years in. So well, that's uh, speculation. You know, there's some people that would claim that it's very possible that this is not the year 20, 23 AD, rather 10, 23 AD, but it nevertheless. 2,000, 1,000, doesn't matter. So, you're, you're going to have all sorts of problems. If you teach a thousand years before the end of the world, okay, so I don't know what view you'd call that. If you're going to teach a, th a literal thousand years, you got all sorts of problems, okay? And I already went over this, but no man knows the day or the hour. So if it was exactly 1,000 years, then man would know the day and hour. So it's at least a double millennium in that sense. So they would say, 1,000 just means a big number, uh, and it could be any any size number. And it's not a period of of unrivaled peace and paradise in which the devil is not around. Um, all millennialists generally have different interpretations for what the binding of Satan means, but they don't take it to mean that all demonic activity is gone, nor do they take it to mean that our sin nature is ceased. Now, this is something that is interesting, and I have to admit I have not read enough commentators on this, but... Have you even read the Bible, Jack? Or Tom? Reflecting back on the pre-mill view, the pre-millennialist view, 
I don't know what they would say about the sin nature of humans living under the literal reign of Christ. I'm not entirely sure. They do say that Jesus will reign with a rule or with a rod of iron. And what? Rod. Nope. Iron. Nope. That's not here in Revelation 20 either. So you don't have Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years. You don't have rule. You don't have rod. You don't have iron. Anywhere at all. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Don't you? You're trying to mix and confuse people. Let's see. Rod. Let's, I don't know if I want to get into that. Not too much. Uh, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers even as I received of my father and again in Revelation 12 and again in Revelation 19 and uh, he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of oh, almighty God that's Revelation 19. I went over that yesterday. What that what they imply by that is is that he will enforce law. So even on the pre oh, for gosh dog's sakes. All right, so he will enforce the law. All right. All right he'll enforce the law like I have no idea who Jesus Christ is. Yeah, I never read the Bible. <laughs> this is the new covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with them. I'm sorry. This, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts, and I will write in their hearts, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. Alright, so this is happening now, obviously. Those of us that are saved... We are born of God, and we have God's laws written on our hearts and in our minds. And we have the spirit of truth to guide us into all righteousness and to lead us away from all unrighteousness. Okay. So oh, I don't know what this guy's saying. I really don't. Pre mill view with Satan literally bound. People will still be sinning on that view, but they're not going to be tempted by the devil. They'll be, it'll be, I, I think it'll be our human. What? I think. Anytime somebody says, sort of, maybe, I think. Yeah, they have no idea what the hell I'm talking about, right? No idea. I think. I don't know. Gigi. Gigi. I think. I think. Gigi. I mean, come on, man. You gotta know this stuff. I mean, how in the world are you okay with? I, I don't know. I, I think a gigi. How in the world are you okay with that? With figure it out, man. Find out. Read the Bible. Get serious about this stuff. Don't just guess and make stuff up. Come on. But they're not gonna be tempted by the devil. They'll be. It'll be, I, I think it'll... I think, I think, I think. No. In Revelation 20... Revelation 20 when... Satan is bound. Uh, you have to understand... What the Bible teaches from the beginning to the end... And then you have to understand what Revelation 20 specifically is about and the book of Revelation, what it is about. That's important. 
Well, you once you get to that point, then you have to. You know, it, it all starts with faith. Okay, but you have to understand that when Satan is bound, that he was not bound before baby Jesus was born. Before baby Jesus was born, there was one country, one nation of God. And outside of that nation of God were the nations deceived by Satan. Now, here comes Jesus and he makes the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in him. Now, Satan is bound. Because he, has, he doesn't have nations for him to deceive. Because the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, at the end of the world, when we are lifted up in the air... then all the people on the earth will be unsaved and so then again Satan will be able to deceive them and he goes and deceives them and gathers them to battle and this is when he gathers them at our feet and this is a fulfillment of the prophecy that begins at Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 I will put enmity between thee and the woman this is the Lord speaking to the serpent I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel alright and as we read all throughout the Bible um, you know and I will uh, until I make thine enemies thy footstool, right? Um, and then, of course, uh, here in First Corinthians 15, um, it talks about uh, uh, you know, right, <laughs> right in front of my face. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. And again in Revelation 3, verse 9, Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Right? So, this is consistent all throughout the Bible. Alright. So, let's continue. It'll be our human nature. I have to admit, I haven't read enough into kind of the weeds of what people teach on that but the weeds the only ones who will be perfect in how about this rather than trusting what men are saying how about trusting what God says and believing the Bible that you hold in your hands well, how, well, I mean does that ever occur to anybody kind of the weeds of what people teach on that but the only ones who will be perfect in on the premillennial view will be Christ and those who had been resurrected prior to the rapture okay did he just say resurrected prior to the rapture he didn't just say that did he Christ and those who had been resurrected prior to the rapture 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 okay so 
that's as nonsensical as it gets. So people are resurrected. Prior, so, okay, technically, yes. Okay, so in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, we shall be resurrected. First the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain. And then the rapture. However, this happens the same moment. We are changed and raptured. We, we, are chain, we are resurrected and we are raptured. First the dead in Christ shall rise first. So resurrected, raptured. Then we which are alive and remain, resurrected, raptured. Change from our glorified bodies and raptured. Changed into the glorified bodies and raptured. What this guy is saying is that what well, is this seven years or a thousand years? They're going to be changed, but they're not going to be raptured until after a thousand years. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. Um, so that's the all mill view. The post mill view, the post millennial view is. Say no. No, 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 no. No, what? That was the pre mill. He's mixing pre mill and o mill. Each on that, but the only ones who will be perfect. In, on the premillennial view will be Christ and those who had been resurrected prior to the rapture. Okay? Um, so that's the amill view. The <laughs> He just said premill. And then he says that's the amill. Are these guys on dope? Postmill view. The postmillennial view is the idea that the the millennium probably hasn't started right now. Probably. What? Or if it has started, it's in the very beginnings. Because on their view, the millennium is is something that the church accomplishes as the church spreads and becomes increasingly powerful and influential. They will eventually, essentially create a utopia on the earth that's the post-millennial view and then that utopia and post-millennials disagree on whether or not it's a literal thousand years or it could be longer but that utopia is going to reign until christ has decided that the time is over and then he returns and so i get confused with these pre I can't wrap my head around. I'm not very smart, fellas. I'm not very smart. I can't wrap my head around post millennial. I don't know what it means. I don't even know what pre millennial means. An a millennial, no millennial. I don't know what that means really either. Except those days be shortened. There should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Well, let me read that again. Except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Christ has decided that the time is over and then he returns and brings the final judgment. So that post-millennials disagree on whether or not it's a literal thousand years or it could be longer. But that utopia is going to reign until Christ has decided that the time is over and then he returns and brings the final judgment. So, so it's so no, the easy way to remember you. it. Pre, uh, the, the, the prefix is the thing that defines for you what the millennial view is. Premillennial means Christ comes pre, before the millennium. Amillennial means there is no millennium in the strict sense. Yeah. And postmillennial means Christ comes after the millennium. So that's those are the views. Postmill and amill people tend to get along really well, and they're unified in not loving pre-mill people. Not loving, you know, they love, I mean, but you know what I mean? They don't love the pre-mill view. And then it's like, it's, it works both ways because people of the pre-mill stance don't particularly love. Good. God almighty. Hey, what is going on here?
You have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. I mean, on I, quite frankly, man, to me, so far, it's as if this guy has never read the Bible, ever. I mean, I've only listened to seven minutes, but man, every every point of indication tells me that this guy has absolutely no idea what the Bible says and yet he's teaching children I, I think I've had it with this guy I think this is enough man and maybe I'm mistaken maybe that's not a child it looks like a child to me but I mean here they are teaching children and this guy has no idea none whatsoever what the Bible says you know what kind of world are we living in right now I mean how wicked is this world is it far worse than what even I can imagine and I'm harping on this stuff every day maybe I'm underselling it maybe it's worse far worse than what I even realized.